In the previous lecture, we discussed the Hall effect and Hall EMF. Now, let's look at the following example that will deal with the Hall effect. So, suppose a strip of metal has a width of 1 centimeter and a thickness of 1 millimeter. The strip is placed into a uniform magnetic field of two Teslas and our magnetic field points out of the board as shown in the following diagram. Now the whole effect or the whole EMF is measured to be 1.7 times 10 to negative 6 volts. So once the whole effect takes place, there is a voltage difference between the two ends of our strip of metal and that produces a certain electric field given by the Hall electric field EH. Now in part A we want to calculate that electric field that is produced as a result of the Hall effect. In part B, calculate the magnitude of electric force on a single electron as a result of the electric field produced by the Hall effect. And in part C, calculate the drift velocity of our electron as it travels next to this edge of our strip of metal. So, let's begin in part A. So, calculate the electric field as a result of the whole EMF. So, by definition of our voltage, we know the voltage difference between two points is equal to our electric field at that point multiplied by our distance. So, the distance in this case is simply the width of our strip of metal and the voltage difference is simply our Hall EMF. So the whole EMF is equal to what we're looking for, EH, multiplied by D. So we can rearrange our equation and solve for our whole electric field. And the whole electric field is equal to the whole EMF, 1.7 times 10 to negative 6 volts, which is given, divided by 0 0.01 meters, which is also given. And that gives us 1.7 times 10 the negative 4 volts per meter is our electric field that exists between the following two edges of our strip of metal. Now, let's move on to part B. Calculate the magnitude of electric force on a single electron as a result of that electric field. So once our whole effect takes place, we can calculate our electric force by using the following equation. So our electric force is equal to the quantity of charge on our electron Q multiplied by the whole electric field. So we just calculated what this quantity was in part A. So we take that and multiply it by the quantity of charge on one electron, 1 1.6 times 10 to negative 19 coulombs. And that gives us a force of about 2.72 times 10 to the negative 23 newtons. And finally, let's move on to part C. We want to calculate the drift velocity of our electron. So once the whole effect takes place, that basically means that the force acting on our electric charge as a result of the electric field is equal to the force acting on our electric charge as a result of the magnetic field. So the electric force is equal to the magnetic force. Now electric force, once again, which was calculated in this part, is Q multiplied by our electric field, while our magnetic force is the charge Q multiplied by the drift velocity multiplied by our magnetic field B. Now notice, our Q's appear on both sides, we can cross them out, and then we can solve for our drift velocity. So, our drift velocity of our electron as it travels across our plate is equal to the electric field calculated in part A divided by the magnetic field which is given to be two Teslas. So 1.7 times 10 to negative 4 volts per meter divided by two Teslas gives us 8.5 times 10 to negative 5 meters per second is the drift velocity of our electron as it travels through the following strip of conducting metal.